What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to see if somebody has Blackjack for a Blackjack game with Kintir and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to test whether or not a player has Blackjack or not. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to determine whether or not a player has blackjack right at the beginning of the game as soon as the cards are shuffled. So we can shuffle, and boom, we see right here, blackjack player wins because we've got an ace and a queen, and that's 21. That's blackjack and blackjack. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with over 200 other Kinter videos in the series. So check it out if you haven't so far. So I've got the code that we worked on last time. I've just renamed it blackjack underscore two. And the first thing we need to do is sort of keep track of the score. And we started to do this a few videos ago. If we come down here to the shuffle section, we have this dealer and player, but if you remember, this will output into a dealer list and a player list, something like 13 underscore of underscore spades. And that's great if we want to keep track of the different suits and stuff, but to determine sort of the score, we just need this first thing, the 13, right? And also blackjack is weird. So like the jack, the queen, and the king, they're all worth 10 points, but we named them 11, 12, and 13. And remember our ace, we named that 14, the 14 of hearts, the 14 of spades, whatever, that's the ace. So we're going to have to do a little bit of converting of that into actual numbers so that we can then determine whether or not the player or the dealer has 21 and has won, right? So the point of blackjack is to eventually get up to 21 points, not to go over 21. But if you're dealt 21 right off the bat, you automatically win. So if the dealer deals himself an ace and a 10, that's 21. The dealer automatically wins. If the player gets, you know, an ace and a jack or some other face card, that's 21. They automatically win. So we need to test for that as soon as we shuffle. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So first thing I'm going to do is we've got this dealer in this player list. But like I said, it has the text in there. So let's just make this easier. Let's create two more score lists. And I'm going to call one dealer underscore score. I'm going to call the other one player underscore score. And I'm just going to come down here. And let's say dealer underscore score, set that equal to an empty Python list. And then player underscore score is also going to be an empty Python list, All right? So as soon as the game starts and our cards are shuffled, these will get initialized, right? So, okay, now let's come down here. And remember, we, we do a dealer hit and a player hit whenever we deal out a card. So when that happens, if we come down here, we see we're appending it into the dealer card. Let's also append to dealer score list, right? And here, let's do some logic. So we know an ace is a 14 and a face card is either 11, a 12, or a 13. A jack is an 11, a 12 is a queen, and a 13 is a king, and a 14 is an ace. So we need to convert those into just 10, right? So let's do that now. And let's say, and convert face cards to 10 or 11. So first, let's just take this dealer card and strip away the text. Because remember, like a jack is an 11 of underscore spades, right? We want to strip away that and just get to the 11. And we've done this before a few videos ago when we looked at the war game that we created. So we can do the same thing. I'm going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it D card. And let's set that equal to, we want an integer. And then it's just going to be dealer card, right? But then we want to dot split it. And we want to split out everything before the underscore. And that's the first underscore. So there. And then we want to return that as the zeroth item, right? So this will basically just take, for instance, the 13 underscore of underscore spades. It will find this first little underscore right here. Take everything after that, get rid of it, and then convert this to an actual integer, right? Int. And we're good to go. So, okay. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now we've got the number. So now let's do some logic. So, okay, we know that the ace is the 14, the 14 of hearts, the 14 of spades, whatever. But as far as score goes, an ace is worth 11 points. So let's convert that 14 into an 11. So let's go if D card equals 14, then let's just go ahead and take our dealer 
underscore score list that we just created. And let's append onto that the number 11, right? Else, so let's go L if, if the D card equals an 11, which is a jack, or if the D card equals a 12, which is a queen, or if the D card equals a 13, which is a king, then we just want a dealer underscore score dot append, and we want to put in 10 because we want all of our face cards to be worth 10. The jack is worth 10, the queen is worth 10, and the king is worth 10, right? So, okay, else, otherwise, let's just dealer underscore score dot append, and then just append in whatever the D card is, right? So if it's a seven, we'll just slap a seven in there. If it's a three, a three gets put in there. So, okay, that looks pretty good. So now let's just do the same thing for, this is the dealer hit, let's go down to the player hit right there and do the exact same thing. So let's look down here by the append and let's just sort of paste this in and I'm just gonna change all this, these D cards to P cards for player card. So P card, P card, P card, and P card, Jean-Luc Picard. Eh, eh. All right, and then let's change all these to player cards, all right? Because again, that's up here, this player card, right? So that's player card, player score, player score, and player score. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go through here and just make sure that looks right. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Unless we did a typo or something, I think that should work. So, okay, we've got that stuff done. Now let's come back up here and create a new function to test whether or not our score is blackjack, is 21, right? So let's come up here and let's just create a new function to test for blackjack on shuffle, right? So let's define and let's go blackjack underscore shuffle, call it whatever you want. And I'm gonna pass in a variable called player, right? So we wanna run this for the dealer and for the player. And instead of creating two of these functions, one for the dealer and one for the player, I'm just gonna create one function and pass in player and then we'll do some logic to determine, you know, who's doing who. So basically we wanna run this thing after the cards have been shuffled out. And so remember when we run our shuffle function, it calls dealer hit and player hit. So I'm gonna come down here. You could probably do this a couple of different ways and we might change this a little bit later. But for now, we're gonna go down here to the end of dealer hit. And we're just gonna call that blackjack underscore shuffle. And we wanna pass in dealer, right? And let's say here, check for blackjack, right? And we wanna do the same thing for player hit. So let's just come down here and pass in player there. So, okay. So now we're calling this function and we're passing in this string. This is player or dealer, depending on who. And that will get passed into this variable called player that we can then play around with here. So let's go if player equals the dealer, right, then we wanna do something. Otherwise, if player equals player, we wanna do something else. So what do we wanna do? Well, first, let's make sure that this is during the shuffle, like right here at the beginning. And we can determine that by looking at our dealer underscore score and our player underscore score and saying how many things are in there. If there's two things in there, that means the game has just started and we've just shuffled out two cards. So we can say if the len, we can use the len function of our dealer score equals two, then we wanna do something. So same thing here, we can come down here and say, if the len of our player score equals two, then we wanna do something. So what do we wanna do? Well, we know that there's two things in our list and they're both integers. And we know if they add up to 21, that means blackjack, right? So let's just test for that. So let's go if, dealer underscore score, and then we want the zeroth item plus dealer underscore score, and then we want the oneth item. So in a list, lists always start out at zero. So the first thing in the list is dealer score zero. The second thing in the list is dealer score one. If we add up both of these and they equal 21, well, you know, that's blackjack. So what do we wanna do? Well, let's go, let's create a message box and you can do anything you want here. Let's go show info. 
And then let's just say uh, dealer wins. I don't know, right? And then uh, let's say a little message here that says uh, blackjack. Dealer wins. I don't know, whatever. And then actually to use this, we have to import message box. So let's come up here to the top and let's go from tkinter. We want to import message box. There we go. And then remember down here, let's disable buttons. So if we come down here to the bottom, remember we've got this button that says hit me and we've got this button that says stand. Well, if the game's over, we don't want to be able to keep hitting, right? You, you don't get any more cards if the dealer's already won. So let's disable these two buttons. That's going to be card button and stand button. So let me just copy this guy and let's say card button dot config. And we just want to set the state equal to disabled, right? And so I copy this. And then this other one was, I think, stand button. Okay, so that looks good. So let's just copy all of this stuff and come down here and paste it in. And here, instead of dealer score, we just want the player score, obviously. And this guy also will be player score. And then the message should be player wins, right? And then blackjack. Player wins. Okay. And again, our buttons are disabled. So let's copy this. And whenever the game is restarted, when we shuffle a new game, we need to enable these buttons, right? So let's come do our shuffle function. And let's say, ooh, I need to indent these correctly. There we go. And then this will be the state is, you would think it would be enabled, but it, no, it's normal. <laughs> I don't know why. So the normal state of a button is the normal state. It's not the enabled state. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run this. And we got a 10 and an ace. That should be blackjack, but nothing seems to have happened. So we did something horribly wrong. So let's head back over here and look at our blackjack shuffle function. Ah, so these should be double equal to signs. Why didn't you tell me? Because <laughs> right? we are not assigning, we are evaluating. So obviously those should be double. Okay, let's try this again. And just shuffle, let's shuffle through here until we see one that looks like a winning hand. So far, nothing. And let's see here. There we go, player wins, ace and a king. Blackjack, player wins. And our buttons here are disabled. We can start over. And let's see if we can get one at the top here for the dealer. Oh, player wins again, okay. <laughs> Player's very lucky today. All right, I'm just gonna. Start clicking like crazy here. There we go. Dealer wins, buttons are disabled, and we're good to go. So pretty straightforward. And you could probably figure out how we're gonna move on from here to once we you know, continue on and uh, get the score for the rest of the game. But for this, at least is the very first sort of section of scoring that we need. Initial blackjack when the game starts, and pretty simple with just you know, a few lines of code here. You could probably streamline this in to even less code here, but I want to be nice and explicit so you can see exactly what we're doing. The real big thing here, the heavy lifting on this was really just this stuff right here, where we kind of did a little logic to turn our face cards into 10 point cards instead of just, you know, their name, like the 11 as the Jack. Well, that's 10 points. The 12 is the queen. Well, that's 10 points. The 13 is the king. That's 10 points. The 14 is the ace. That's 11 points. And we just did a little bit of logic to sort that all out. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.